present to you four medical organizations that have come up in the last few years with recommendations about the question, how long should a mom and baby breastfeed for? So the first medical organization is the American Academy of Pediatrics. So you'll hear us mention this, the AAP. That's the, our group of pediatricians from the United States. Their, recommend, their first recommendation came out in 1997. Um, the American Acad Academy publishes statements on a lot of different topics, how to handle babies who are getting yellow, how many immunizations we should give, what we should do about sleeping in infants, and they have a statement on breastfeeding, and it's called Breastfeeding and the Use of Human Milk. It was first published in 1997, and in it they say that when a family says to me, well, Dr. Philip, how long do you think I should breastfeed my baby for, that I would go to their recommendation, and that is exclusive breastfeeding for six months, and then breastfeed for a year or more, depending on the mother's and baby's wishes, adding solid foods along with the breast milk at six months. Too much of a good thing in breastfeeding is not a better thing. So you don't want a baby to be exclusively breastfeeding at 10 months because the breast milk doesn't have enough calories and nutrients in to support the baby's needs at 10 months. But exclusivity to six months is fine. Add baby foods along with the breast milk at six months and then keep going as long as they would like. But the AAP would like the mom and the baby to go for at least one year. Now I want to tell you when this was published in 1997 it was highly controversial with all the newspaper stories saying top baby doctors making moms feel guilty. That's how um, radical the statement was in 1997. They revised their statements every five to seven years and so it's been revised and reprinted in 2005 with the same recommendation. Not quite as radical now so the culture's changing a little bit. It didn't hit the front page of, of, of newspapers this time. So another medical organization is the American College of OBGYN, all the obstetricians and gynecologists. They published their statement on breastfeeding in 2000, and they basically said, we think breastfeeding is important. We agree with the pediatricians on how long they recommended. So that was six months in a year. Then the World Health Organization came out in 2001. Now the World Health Organization, as you know, takes is in, interested in maternal infant health for mothers and babies around the world, dealing in countries that may not have enough clean water, may not have enough money to even buy anything. So they uh, came out with a recommendation, exclusivity for six months, but go for two years or beyond, adding the baby foods at six months. And then the American Academy of Family Practice in 2001 came out and said the same thing as the World Health Organization. So I could give you 30 organizations recommendations, but I picked four of the top groups. But you see the common denominator here is exclusivity for six months. I, you know, to get a mom to exclusively breastfeed for a week is a challenge because they just don't think they're making enough milk and they're worried that the baby's not eating. So this exclusivity for six months is the goal, but it's very, very difficult to achieve that. We also have healthy people goals. So healthy people is the United States government getting together, officials meeting and saying over the next 10 years, so from 2000 until 2010, what goals do we want to reach in terms of men getting prostate screening, women getting mammograms, um, infant mortality rates, breastfeeding goals. Healthy People 210 has about 40 goals regarding breastfeeding. And in it, it talks about, well, how many women would we like to be breastfeeding in the United States? What are our goals? So Healthy People 210 goals are that we would like to have 75% of women initiate breastfeeding, which we kind of define as breastfeeding when they leave the hospital setting. 50% be breastfeeding at six months, and 25% be breastfeeding at 12 months. So when you talk about breastfeeding goals, you have to talk about, well, what's, how do you count a breastfeeder? So at, at six months, how do you count that? Does that, is that a... Does a baby count as a breastfeeder if they're getting one sip of breast milk at the time you're measuring? Do they have to be getting more breast milk than formula? Do they have to be getting only breast milk? So how are we defining this goal? Whenever you talk about breastfeeding, you have to talk about your definition of breastfeeding. So I'm going to tell you what, the health, what healthy people defines as their goal. And there's a historical background to this. From 1950 until 2001, the only breastfeeding data and rates that were kept for our country were kept by Ross Labs. Do you guys know who Ross Labs are? <laughs> Ross Labs is a formula manufacturer, and they ma manufacture Similac and Isomil, which are two baby formulas. Now, to their credit, because they were the only organization giving the United States government our breastfeeding rates, they sent out millions of surveys every year to families, and they sent it out and said, like, to my daughter, hey, Jessie, 
I, when you left the hospital, were you giving your baby any sip of breast milk? So their definition of breastfeeding was one sip counts. And that's the data that we had from 1950 to 2001. So in 2001, because of all these recommendations that were coming out from medical organizations, the United States government said, this is crazy. Breastfeeding is really important. We should start to keep our own rights because there clearly is a conflict of interest having the formula company keeping breastfeeding rights. So the CDC in 2001 said, okay, we'll start keeping our rights. And um, in the National Immunization Survey, they're now asking three questions about breastfeeding. So the, the data I'm going to show you now is coming from the CDC. But I wanted to tell you about this Ross data because we're going to compare the CDC data to the Ross data. And interestingly, it's fairly close, although Ross never wanted to know exclusive, exclusivity rates, which is really the gold standard. So that asterisk there, any amount, so that means SIP at any outcome point counts. One SIP counts. So 75, 50, 25. Okay. Now, when the CDC came in in 2001 and said, we're now going to keep breastfeeding rates for the government and we're going to do it right, they said, we also want to know exclusivity rates because that is truly the gold standard. So now, because the CDC is collecting rates since 2001, we have exclusivity rates. And, the health, and they added healthy people goals for this. So healthy people 210 goals now are, at three months, we want to have 60% of babies being exclusively breastfed, only getting breast milk not getting any sort of juice, cereal, fruit, and just breast milk. That's all they need. And we want to have 25% be breastfeeding at six months. We also have the United States government in 2000 came out with its first official United States policy on breastfeeding. And it's called the HHS Blueprint for Action on Breastfeeding, which we in the field call the Blueprint. And this is what it said. It was um, written, it came out from the Surgeon General's office. And it talked about low breastfeeding rates being, quote, a public health challenge. And it also addressed, it also said that we all need to address the, quote, alarmingly low rates seen among African American women. So that was published in 2000. So a flurry of activity in the late 90s and 2000 about breastfeeding.